Whoa. And Hannah is here. I have a kin stretch model. I have the camera running. We are ready to go for another awesome kin stretch class coming at you right in your living room or wherever you're practicing. Um, today we're going to work on a setup and a position that is uh, usually pretty new for people. It's like, I never even considered that my body could move this way. But that means that there's some, some hidden gems in there um, very often. So we're going to be training hip adduction. That's the ability to bring your knee across your midline and really strengthen the inner thighs, but also stretch out the glutes in kind of a different angle. And then we'll pepper in some neck training as well. You're not really gonna need any propage today, uh, just a comfortable floor space, maybe a little pillow um, or a block will be helpful to have on hand. And then at a certain point, we're gonna be working specifically on the neck uh, and sitting on the floor. So at that point, if you wanna lean up against a couch or a coffee table or just something so you don't have to worry about keeping your spine upright, that might feel good. Uh, all right, so go ahead and come into quadruped to start and we're just gonna work our standard cat-cow segmentation. But today, before you start, I want you to really focus on pinning your fingertips heavy into the floor and use that to charge up a bit more energy in your forearms and upper arms than you would if you had just set up in quadruped. And then do the same through your toes. If your cur toes are curled under, you can do that with the big toes. If your feet are flat though, you can just try to push the whole foot into the floor. And then once you clearly have those two points of tension established, go ahead and start articulating your spinal motion from your tailbone, curling that tailbone under and making your way segment by segment up your spine. Okay. And as you go, I kind of want you to take a moment and imagine that your uh, body like is a skeleton model like you'd see in a classroom and of course it's surrounded by a lot of muscle tissue and skin and fat and other types of tissue but right in the center of everything is that skeletal model and I want you to think about moving those bones around especially through your spine as you articulate your way from the tailbone in flexion and then now in extension just see if you can turn on that x-ray vision inside your own skeleton. Great, go ahead one more minute here, moving your spinal bones around and realizing that you need muscle tension, muscle tissue to contract in order to move those spinal bones. That's the only reason that we're really cueing the hand tension and the foot tension is to help you key in on that muscular effort. Good. 30 more seconds, your feet or your hands might start getting tired. So go ahead and send the signal again just to keep that tension up and let that be a stimulus to build a little heat in your body as well. As you work through extension for this last time, feeling where you're noticing some tightness, where you're noticing contraction sensations. Good, all right, and wrap it up there. Go ahead and just sit back comfortably. We're just gonna give the wrist a quick moment here. So make two fists. Imagine you're holding a heavy hammer in each fist, so heavy that your upper arms have to contract quite a bit, and then squeeze your elbows into your body. And then with both hands at the same time, hammer down with just your wrists. So it's like you're, you're moving that head of the hammer towards the floor and then back, pulling the head of the hammer away from the floor. Go ahead, keep going back and forth. And again, use that x-ray vision to imagine moving the bones of your hand without moving the bones of your forearm. So you're really honing in on what can happen in that space, even a very small space between your forearm and your hand. 10 more seconds, can you squeeze the handle of those hammers a little bit tighter? Good, and relax, come back to quadruped. Okay, now this time, instead of moving your spine in flexion extension, we're gonna try to rotate your spine, but specifically at your lowest segments of your spine, at your SI joint. That's the spot where your spine fits like a key right into the lock of your pelvis. So we're gonna try to just zoom in on that area a little bit. 
And the way we do that is by, again, cementing the hands on the floor and the feet on the floor. And keep the feet on the floor, but start pulling one kneecap. Hannah's going to do her left one first. Pull that kneecap as high up off the floor as you can and just hold it at that top position and make sure that you haven't leaned to the right. So don't lean away from that elevated side and then control it back down and switch to the right kneecap pulling off the floor. Hold the highest position you found and then smoothly control your way back down. As you continue doing this, again, make sure you're not leaning to the one side or to the other. Make sure both feet are connected to the floor and providing some tension. And then you'll start to notice that your pelvis is actually rotating. You can think of it as like your belt buckle is turning one direction and then the other direction. And that's what we want to warm up. Just take another 20 seconds and find out exactly how far you can pull your kneecap off the floor by finding those complete stops. Maybe noticing what muscles are contracting to help you do that. What areas are tightening or coming into stretch when you get to your end range. And then go ahead and set that kneecap down and relax. Excellent. All right, sit back in a comfortable manner, whatever's comfortable for you. It might be seated, it might be uh, resting on your heels like Hannah is, whatever. But we're gonna work on the neck real quick. So go ahead and hands on the thighs or on the floor. Brace your shoulders down your back. And then just a quick check in for your neck car. Chin pulls into your neck and then down to your chest. Once you feel a stretch at the back of your neck, start rotating one direction. Look as far as you can behind your shoulder before starting to trace a big rainbow arc with your chin up and over to the other side. All the way until you're looking over and behind that other shoulder. And then trace your chin as close as you can to your chest. When you get to the midline, pause and tick tock that car the other direction. As you go, work hard to keep your shoulder blades still and down your back while you work uh, as well with your head moving the chin as high as you can. So you're kind of working in two directions at once. Nice, we're gonna just do one more rep in each direction. So reinvest in that brace of your shoulder blades. This time, close your teeth together. So you just lightly bite your teeth together and don't let your jaw drop as your chin goes up to the ceiling. Notice how that might expose different tissue to stretch. You might feel like you can't reach quite as far in your neck car because we've locked down the jaw motion. Again, when you get to the midline, pause and go the other direction to finish your second neck car. Good stuff. Going by feel and upgrading your brain's map of what's possible at your neck. That's really gonna help set us up for our work later on the neck. All right, so finish that car up at your pace and then make your way into a side lying position. And we're gonna quickly move through some hip cars. Okay, so brace your body in whatever manner you've found to be effective for you. We like to push into the floor either with a bent elbow or a straight arm. And then keeping that brace in order to keep your spine still Let's drive your top heel behind you and do as much hip extension as you can find and then shin to the ceiling. When you find your maximum height, start bringing that knee forward. Start reaching your knee towards your chest without letting your spine change shape and then sweep that knee down to your other knee. Now pause there, drive your top knee into your bottom knee so you feel your inner thigh muscles work and then keep that happening as you go knee to chest. So we're tick-tocking this car as well. I'm trying to involve just a little bit more of your inner thigh tissue. As you reach that heel behind you, keep reaching behind you, reach your knee towards the floor as well, again, to check in on that inner thigh tissue. Are you able to contract it clearly, or is it kind of a, a, 
a dark spot, a foggy area in your um, sensation. Go ahead, one more rep in each direction, driving your heel behind you, reaching your shin to the ceiling, bringing that knee forward, really feeling the effort required to keep the majority of your body still. That's where the majority of your effort should go. And then as your knees touch, go the other direction. And keep carving out the largest circle you can without sacrificing your spinal shape or spinal position. Really trying to fire up all that tissue around your top hip. And finish up that second car. Take a breath and let's flip on over to the other side. It's always amazing to me how just a couple reps of a real intense car can really take it out of you. So give yourself that moment to breathe. And then once you feel stable and supported on this other side, Start smoothly ramping up your body brace and drive your top heel behind you. Lift that shin to the ceiling, finding the highest position you can with the knee before sending the knee forward. And clasping the knees together. Again, take that moment to feel the knees squeeze together. Notice your inner thigh tissue and then keep that happening as you start driving your knee towards your chest. Shin to the ceiling. Keep that height as you start to sweep back behind you, reaching your heel as far into extension as you can, but now also adding a reach to the floor with your knee. So from extension, trying to find that inner thigh tissue as well. Take a moment to check your brace and we'll do one more rep in each direction. Taking your time, pausing if you need to, smoothly moving through any areas that feel less clear, but also luxuriating in the spots that you're, you feel really solid with and feeling what is contracting. Really focus in on what the sensation feels like. Nice work. Keeping that tension through your midsection all the way to the finish line, finishing up that hip car. All right, as you're done, we're gonna now get into the hip adduction position that we're gonna be working on today. And we're gonna do that from quadruped. So make your way back to quadruped. And you won't necessarily be on your wrist this whole time. Um, I'm just gonna have you scooch towards the wall a little bit, yeah. Uh, so if the wrists are giving you, a, you know, trouble, I'll show you a setup change um, as we go. But if you know that your wrists really don't like quadruped and this might be distracting for you, now would be the time to set up on your forearms on an elevated surface. Um, so we're gonna stretch this right leg first. And to do that, I'm gonna ask Hannah to just straighten out the left leg. And you can go along with us because we're gonna search out for a passive stretch. And from here, we're gonna find that same tilt in the pelvis. But instead of lifting this knee off the ground, we're gonna drop the other side. So again, think about your belt buckle turning towards that down leg, okay? And then let's just undo that for a second, just so you can have a couple passes to get into that leaned position or that rotated pelvic position and then come back out of it. Okay, now on this last one, I want you to actively turn your belt buckle towards that knee. So it's not just that gravity is dropping your left hip towards the ground, although it is, but you're also encouraging that along by trying to actively turn your pelvis towards that knee. You can increase that feeling by trying to sweep the kneecap to your left. So your right kneecap is trying to go off to the left. That should help you feel your inner thigh a little bit more and pull you into this lean a little bit further, okay? Now, once you feel like you have gone as far as you can with that, you can just relax your back knee either to the floor or hook it around your, your back ankle. Those are two options, and I want you to just play with which one feels easiest for you. 
So if the back knee on the floor works, that's fine. But also, Hannah, if you just show quickly how that back knee can kind of hook around the back ankle, that sometimes can feel a little bit more uh, secure. And it also might give you a little bit more sensation of stretch in the back pocket area. Okay, so optional add on here, but keep in mind at end range, we're both trying to shorten the inner thigh stuff and we're trying to lengthen the outer thigh stuff, both things, okay? Now, once you're here, just taking a few deep breaths and helping your body relax into the stretch of that outer hip stuff. And here you might explore coming down to your forearms and see if you're able to keep that stretch. If doing that took you out of the stretch, then you definitely want to stay on straight arms. But sometimes that forearm position can feel even a little bit more relaxed. Okay, so as you hold for just another 30 seconds, focus on the most uh, relaxing inhale you can find, and then send out any tension that you feel in your hip with your exhale. So inhale with relaxation, exhale, send out the tension. And use both that in inhale and exhale to hone in even more clearly on what exactly is tight on the outside of your hip. This is a position that is very commonly tight, but of course it's gonna be different because every body's different and every body has experienced different inputs from the world to make this area tight. So we really wanna find the setup and the specific line of tension that is tight for you. Okay, now in whatever position you found, just try to uh, hold onto that position. So put a little brace into your body such that you're gonna solidify whatever shape you're in right now, all right? So you might do that by making two tight fists, feeling those fists turn your arms on and your shoulders on. You might kick your back foot into the floor. And then here's where we're gonna turn on your pails contraction first. Imagine that we've super glued your right kneecap to the ground and you're gonna try to move the floor with your kneecap out to the side. So you're gonna try to push the floor to your right. Now, the more that you try to do that, the more the rest of your body is gonna try to move in another direction and so you're gonna need to stay stiff. All right, so ramp up both the stiffness of your body and your efforts at trying to pull the floor to your right or push the floor to your right, ramp that up to 50% effort. Go ahead, build it up just a little bit more to 60% effort, and then hold on to that significant but sustainable effort. And as you do, specifically try to contract the tissue where you were just feeling a stretch. And just hold it, 10 more seconds giving that tissue time to really get the signal that we're trying to send. Three, two, as you relax, feel your pelvis maybe turn and tilt towards that right leg a little bit more because now that line of tension is a little bit more ready to open, ready to lengthen, okay? Now, instead of using your super glued kneecap to push the floor to the right, we're gonna introduce a rails contraction by trying to slide the floor more to the left, so across your body, and that signal should help you start to lock onto a contraction of your inner thigh. As you do that, imagine that angle between your thigh bone and your pelvis getting smaller or getting those two areas closer together. In a sense, you're trying to touch your belt buckle, if you were wearing one, to your inner thigh. It's gonna be impossible to do that, but that can give you the idea of the true rails contraction we're after. Build up your whole body tension and send that effort to try to, to close your inner thigh angle even more. Five, four, three, really send that signal. Two, one, and melt it away. Good. All right, gently come out of this position. Come up for air real quick. Yeah, and it should feel very clearly like you know right where you were stretching and lengthening, 
but maybe also, okay, I feel that inner thigh tissue working as well. It's, it's maybe getting close to a cramp feeling. All right, let's get into the other side. Uh, go ahead and turn your body like you were going to. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and same thing, start in quadruped, extend your right leg, and then just do a couple tilts of your pelvis, trying to face your belt buckle towards your left thigh bone, and then back towards the floor. Back and forth. So you can really imagine that angle that I was just describing between your pelvis and your thigh bone. Okay? Yeah, Hannah's kind of showing that area. Mining skills. <laughs> Okay, and then settle into your most leaned position. Do you want me to actually shift my hip? Mm, great question. So, so Hannah's I just, am I trying to leave my hip where it is, but bring my other hip towards it? Yeah. So once you rotate your pelvis to face that left knee, then we got to micro adjust to get even deeper into the stretch based on what you feel. So if you feel that by leaning to your left a little bit, that helps increase the stretch, do it. Also, if you feel like hooking your back knee on your ankle helps increase that stretch, do it. Okay, both of those things are options. But then you might notice like Hannah's doing a little hunting motion here. She's not getting way out of the position, but she is scanning, going slowly enough to be able to identify, oh yeah, there's my line of tension. That's harder to find on the side. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it might be a little bit different. It might be like, oh, I don't feel the stretch. That doesn't mean stop looking for the stretch. Just means it might be in a little different position. Mm -hmm. Okay. You might play with thinking tailbone up to the ceiling a little bit more. That should increase the stretch. Again, you might play with leaning a little bit more to the left or making your knee a little heavier into the ground. Okay. Either or rather whatever uh, cue helps you get deeper into that sensation of stretch is the right cue for you on this side. Go ahead and find that position that you can relax into. It's not going to be a totally relaxed situation, but we want to be relaxed enough that the stretching area is the most prominent sensation in your mind's eye. So if you're in this setup and all you can think about is your neck, then we got to find a different setup. Maybe you need to support your head like Hannah is doing with her fists. Maybe you need to move your elbows just a little bit to support your body a little bit more. But I really invite you to scan and try to solve for this passive stretch position because the better quality passive stretch you have, the more successful the isometrics are going to be when we start them up very shortly. Take a few more deep inhales and tension relieving exhales. All right, and as you finish up this deep breathing, again, conceptualize the inside of your hip is getting shorter. Pelvis is getting closer to thigh, and that means that the outside of your hip, roughly where your back pocket would be if you had po uh, pockets on, um, that area is getting longer. See if you can maximize that. All right, now from here, start to stiffen up your body a little bit so you won't move at all but all of a sudden you're starting to exert a little tension in your muscles, getting active. And then that should help you stay in place as you imagine your kneecap is super glued to the floor and then start sweeping that kneecap out to the left. Like you're trying to push the floor away from your midline. Do it gently at first so you can lock right on to that line of tension that you were just stretching and contract that area. You're trying to make that area stronger. Keep sweeping the floor away from your midline, bring it up to 50% effort and 60% effort, making sure you're bracing the rest of your body and your arms enough that your body doesn't shift in the opposite direction. Good, keep holding this pales contraction five more seconds. Good, and relax. As you relax, you might notice that that tissue gives way on the outside of your hip and you're able to turn your pelvis more towards your thigh. If possible, that's great. And then from here, 
Start ramping up your rails contraction. Imagine that your kneecap is again super glued and now we're trying to sweep the floor to your right across your midline, effectively bringing your thigh bone closer to your pelvis or your pelvis closer to your thigh bone. As you lock onto that inner thigh contraction, ramp it up to a nice, significant, but safe feeling contraction. There's the possibility of cramping your inner thigh muscles, and I want you to go with that as much as possible before it actually full on cramps. Hold it five more seconds. Trying to bring the pelvis closer to the inner thigh. Three, two, one, and relax. Good. Okay. Now melt it away and go ahead and come back up to quadruped. Now, Hannah, that felt pretty intense in each glute, right? Yeah. If you went through that and you went, I felt a little stretch, but it wasn't really clear, I would strongly recommend you just roll back the tape and go through that pales rails setup a second time because that will really heighten the clarity of the sensations that we're after. If, however, you felt it very clearly, then this next piece is gonna make a ton of sense as we retest our hip slice or our pelvic tilt. So come back into quadruped, straight arms. Either curl those toes unders or cement the tops of your feet to the floor. Make your hands real heavy. And then start to lift just your left kneecap away from the ground and really pull it up as high as you can. Now hold that end range position and imagine tightening the inner thigh or the left groin area even tighter and that should be something that you recognize as a rails contraction. Then set that knee down, bring the right kneecap up, keeping your hands and your feet heavy and try to shorten the right groin area pelvis to thigh, then set it down. Keep going like this. Left kneecap pulls up to a total and complete stop hold, and then smoothly bring it down. Keep going 45 more seconds. I want you to be sweating by the end of these 45 seconds. Feel that the work in your body is starting in your groin area on either your left or your right side but it's so strong that it actually spills over to the whole rest of your body. And if you're feeling that inner thigh contraction clearly, absolutely it should give you a stretch in your right glute or your left glute, that opposite side of the joint. Sometimes that can be the more helpful target is to try to really stretch that area as you elevate your kneecap. Good, but mostly just check to see if this feels a little bit more accessible as a movement than when we did it as a warm up. All right, and relax. Very nice work. Okay. Yeah, feel the inner thighs. Nice. All right, so an area that doesn't get a lot of training. So we need to do some real work to instigate that, um, that ability. All right, so then we're going to put that into a bit of motion and start to integrate this tissue. Go ahead, come into a butterfly setup. So that's with feet together and your butt on the floor. Okay. Now this is not always a super accessible position for people. Um, and while usually we would be cool with like leaning back, today I actually want you to train the tissue that pulls your spine upright. So go ahead and Make, your, make sure you're away from a wall or a, a couch if you're um, gonna use that later for support. And pull with your hands into the tallest spinal position you can find. All right, take a moment here. And you might notice that pushing your knees out wider doesn't feel great on your inner thigh right now. We're gonna see if we can uh, improve that a bit. Um, but for now, get that spine up as tall as you can. Then start to play with the feeling of actively pulling your knees towards the floor and see if you can feel both butt cheeks squeeze and feel that that's sort of like the root of your spine. So your tall spine is relying on the squeeze of both glutes. And then very slowly see if you can keep that wide knee position and take both fists out in front of you off of your shins. If as you do that, you feel your whole body change shape, then you're gonna go ahead and keep holding onto your shins, okay? Now relax back down, hands on the shins, and take a moment to breathe. 
All right, so I want you to just hang out in this position. Hannah's gonna show where we're going and then you're gonna do it along with us. So in a moment, you'll brace again, get your spine tall, pull your knees out wide, actively, and then if possible, take your hands off your shins and begin actively reaching your right knee more towards the floor, essentially turning your body. So begin letting your left butt cheek off the ground. You might lean, you gotta go by feel, good stuff. And you'll see Hannah's kind of searching for the ground with her right knee, and then she's gonna shift back into a seated position, nice and smooth, not letting gravity win, and start going off to the left. Really reaching the knees apart and feeling the shift in body weight as essentially a core drill. It's a core training exercise. And then back down, great, okay? So go ahead and set up nice tall spine. Hannah's gonna show this next one with hands on the shins so that you can see how that would go if you're someone who really is feeling like that is important for you. But if you're able to get the hands off the shins, I want you to try it that way with fists out in front. So brace your body, tall spine, pull the knees wide, and then actively begin reaching your right knee towards the floor and notice the shift in body weight that that's gonna take in order to get that knee to the floor. Very nice. Once you make contact with the floor and find a complete stop, then smoothly shift back to a seated position. Make sure your spine's still tall and then actively reach your left knee towards the floor, shifting your body weight and trying to cement that outside of your knee to the ground. Very nice. Back to center, making sure you don't come back quick and take a moment to breathe and relax. Yep, we're gonna do one more. And this time, I want you to imagine, I'm gonna just swing around here. As you bring your thigh to the floor, try to connect as much of the outside of your thigh to the ground as possible. And then smoothly bring that outside of your thigh away from the ground. So again, we're resisting any sort of um, momentum shifting of like moving quickly, but we're really moving under control. So pull your spine tall, pull your knees out wide, optional hands off the shins or keep your hands on and then start reaching your knee towards the floor either side trying to keep your spine tall trying to keep your knees wide apart but actively pressing the outside of your thigh into the floor find that complete stop and then back to center check in that your knees are still actively pulling apart and then shift off to the other side reaching that outside of your other thigh to the ground, trying to cement it down. And then back upright, not giving up your tension until you're all the way tall and seated on both glutes again. Go ahead, relax. Excellent. So we're gonna build on that in a moment, but for now, I just want you to come up to a wall or a couch, stay in butterfly if it's comfortable enough for your hips, just so we can spend a little passive time here and uh, make sure your spine is supported, okay? Now, <clears throat> you can uh, take both hands on the inside of your knees and use this as a moment to just try to get a little bit extra stretch time. This will help you when we get back to that butterfly uh, movement path in a moment. And then think about making your head and neck as tall as possible here. Imagine there's a string out the top of your head and it's gently pulling your head taller. Okay, see if you can find what needs to happen through your neck. Might be some relaxation feeling, some letting go of tension, or it might be some asserting some deeper musculature to actually think about pulling your vertebrae bones apart from each other so you get taller. It's like anti-gravity effect through your spine. All right, and then with that tallest sp possible spinal column, begin reaching uh, into rotation. So you're going to stay upright, not chin to chest, but start turning over one shoulder and see how far you can go without your shoulders following that rotation of your head. And then back to center. Good. And then rotate to look over the other shoulder, actively turning. Good. Now back to center here. As you go back in the first direction, Think about segmenting now. So try to move from the very top of your neck, 
from the base of your skull, and then see if you can get a little bit more rotation out from the vertebrae below, vertebrae below, and vertebrae right before your shoulders start. All right, once you've wrung that out, go back to center. From center, again, start that rotation from the base of your neck. That'll give a little bit of rotation, and then the vertebrae below that will give a little bit more, and the vertebrae below that will give a little bit more, and all the way. Okay, back to center. One more, invest in your hand pressure on the knees or maybe on the floor, and do one more active rotation and really find out how far can your neck rotate when you're giving it your best intention. And then back to center, nice work. Remember the quality and specificity of your focus really does matter, really does change what's going on in your body. Good, okay. Now back to center, relax your arms, let your legs relax. And here, if your inner thighs are really distracting you, you could set your legs out straight in front of you. But if butterfly's comfortable, just stay here. Now we're gonna do one last piece for your neck. Take your right fist and place it on the outside of your right jaw and give me just a gentle bite on your teeth. Okay, so it's like a, a freeze frame of getting punched in the face, okay? Uh, I hope that doesn't happen. And from here, start to feel that your fist gently pushes into your jaw, but your head also pushes back into your fist. So nothing moves, but you start to create a rotational contraction through your neck. So it's like I'm trying to look. You're forward. trying to rotate into your hand or towards your arm direction, but nothing's moving. Good. And then keep your hand there, but relax the tension of your arm and of your neck and gently turn in a quarter turn to the left, actually. Yep, good, and pause there. And then in that quarter turn, again, start ramping up the intensity of your fist pushing into your jaw and your jaw pushing back into your fist. Smoothly ramp that down. We're playing with 10 to 20% tension here, so nothing crazy. And then let your uh, head turn another quarter turn to the left. And once you get there, initiate your pressure with your fist and your jaw. Ramp that up to 10 to 20% and hold it. Just hold it and notice we are turning on a rotational contraction uh, for this opening angle of your neck. Relax. We're gonna do one more. Keep your fist where it is this time and see how far you can rotate your jaw away from that fist. So you're really finding your end range and then place your fist right near your chin so that you really have a good lever. And very gentle, yeah, the other hand can help. Very gently begin trying to turn your face back forward, but block it with your fist. Ramp it up to a 10% contraction and use that contraction like a spotlight on what is going on on the opening side of your neck. So if you're turning to the left, that would be the right side of your neck. Hold it, five more seconds and then relax, take the fist away, and gently turn your face back forward, and just do two or three reps of turning to that same direction so you can check in on how that feels after we've done just a little isometric fact finding. A little in internal research. Now, if you have a super healthy neck, never had any issues with your neck, uh, first of all, I've never met anyone like that, but if you happen to be in that, in that boat um, right now, then this might feel like very finicky, small contractions going on through your neck. But if you're someone who either has had recent sensations of, of neck discomfort or are currently experiencing that, this stuff can be a total game changer because it really upgrades what your brain perceives is going on in your neck tissue. All right, let's use the left fist now on the right side of your jaw. Yes, no, left fist on the left side of your jaw. <laughs> what I'm like, okay. So very gently with your face um, faced forward, <laughs> straight on, begin trying to turn your head to the left, but the hand is in the way. If you wanna use your other hand to brace your elbow, that helps. And then gently let that go.
turn your head a quarter turn to the right, hand on uh, or fist on jaw still, ramp up that pales contraction again, trying to turn to the left, but the fist is in the way. Smoothly ramp down that contraction, nothing moves. Then once you're at zero, another quarter turn to the right, I'm being kind of loosey-goosey with that term quarter. It's just subjective, like a little bit of more angle. And then ramp up that pales contraction again, trying to turn your face forward, but the fist is in the way. As you do this, make sure your neck area is not shortening, so you're not letting your scapula come up towards your ear. And then relax. And finally, the last one, keep your fist where it is and see how far you can turn your face off to the right. That is your end of active range of motion. And then place your fist right there to block you in that position. Make sure you feel like you have a good lever on the chin. And then gently ramp up that feeling of turning your face forward. Great. Find that 10 or 15% contraction, and we're gonna hold this one just a little longer. Now, those of you uh, who really know that you're a, a junkie for that high intensity training, now is not the time to bring that high intensity. You don't get any more information for delicate tissue by overloading it. You really want to use a medium effort or a low effort contraction just to build your awareness and then relax that pales contraction, take your fist away, bring your head back forward, and just do a few check-in reps. How easily and smoothly can you turn your face to the right? And notice how that feels different. It's not about measuring an angular change necessarily, it's about locking onto a subjective change in the sensation of turning your head. Great stuff. So this is really allowing your brain to incorporate that new information. All right, so wrap up your final turn to the right and then come away from that support and we're gonna do our final uh, movement path work, incorporating that butterfly, incorporating that inner thigh tissue, but then also starting to connect with a position you're more familiar with, 90-90, all right? So hands on shins, pull your spine up tall. Notice what happens when you start to pull your knees out wide towards the floor. Hopefully you're feeling both butt cheeks squeeze and you might feel some new stretches going on in your inner thigh area. And then anchor your spine in that tall position, either hands on shins or hands come away from your shins. Now begin moving, let's all go to the left. Begin moving to the left, pushing your left knee into the floor just like we were doing before and using a body weight shift to do that. And then keep shifting your body weight until you can get almost all of your body weight on the outside of the le that left thigh. Anchor it down. And notice if you can lift your right foot off the floor here. If you can't, you might need a floor, foot, uh, hand on the floor. But go ahead and lift that foot. Keep the foot off the ground as you begin rotating your back thigh and reach that heel behind you. Go slower than your body wants. When you can't reach any further back, start to set your shin down, aiming to hit the floor with your knee first and then your ankle. <sighs> Take a moment, get up nice and tall. Good. That might mean this area gets shorter, making this next step even harder, but you can do it. Brace, lift your back ankle and knee. Use that left thigh to anchor as you begin rotating your back thigh, bringing your heels and the soles of your feet together and pulling your knees as wide apart as possible, and then keep that width as you begin shifting your body weight back onto both butt cheeks. Get tall here, make sure your knees are still actively reached out wide, and then shift on over to the right thigh. Try to pin that knee right to the floor. Once you've anchored it as much as possible, brace and lift your back uh, foot, rotate your thigh, reach that heel back, smoothly set the shin down, controlling it all the way, and then just take a moment. I'm gonna have you set your hands down here and just pause. 
<laughs> so there is a lot going on there, and there's really no way to, um, to really know what it feels like in your body until you've tried it. But I just want you to recognize you're in 90-90 here, all right? So that rotational component of 90-90, we're starting to play with moving in and out of that rotation. All right, we're gonna get back and go through this a few more reps. Go ahead, brace your body. Pin that right knee to the floor. And then if you can, take one or both hands off the ground, lift your back shin, rotate that back thigh bone without letting the rest of your body move. Hannah's doing a great job of that. Get your heels and the soles of your feet together, really fight for that. And then keep your knees as wide apart as possible as you begin shifting onto both butt cheeks again. Good. Once you're there, feel that head reach to the ceiling and begin moving to the left. Good. Now as we continue, we're gonna be working at Hannah's speed, but I want you to work at your speed just for three more minutes of active effort, controlling your way through butterfly in and out of 90-90. You wanna be looking for any moments where your body flops or moves quickly, and that literally just means that's a moment where your body is not in control and gravity has taken over. Instead, you want to slow down in those moments, support yourself with your hand if you need to, and really find what it feels like to move with active control, aka slowly. Very nice. Can you pin that right thigh to the floor even harder and use that as an anchor to lift your back uh, foot a little bit higher? trying to use as much tissue around your hip socket as possible, searching out what tissue drives your heel and your knee behind you, and then smoothly controlling the lower. As you lift it up, trying to shorten that back hip area. Keep using your front thigh for a brace. Feel rotation on your thigh as you bring that back knee wide away from your front knee and then keep those knees wide. Can you move even slower into your seated butterfly position? Great stuff. We only have 45 more seconds. Keep moving with control. Don't worry about doing the same number of reps on each side. Worry about staying braced. Even as you start to rotate that back thigh, can you keep that back knee as far away from your front knee as possible? Can you search out a little bit more reach behind you? Can you anchor your left thigh to the floor a little bit more? Final 15 seconds, team. Treat this as an all-out effort through your brace and a hyper-slow effort through the moving parts of your body. All right, wherever you're at right now, go ahead, relax, let it go. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. That's a tough movement wow. and um, lots to feel. And so as always, we'd love to hear comments and uh, questions, um, especially if you're having trouble navigating that movement path. It's, it's a lot going on. Uh, I think that's all. Have a great rest of your day and talk soon.